All right, good morning all. We're back up here with Piper. This is day number six with her. And we'll see how today goes. I uh, <coughs> had some tough spots with her yesterday. out last night well, I put a post out last night you know asking for some input from you guys and I got a lot of a lot of good feedback and some ideas that I might try and do today with her so I want to thank everybody that offered up their comments and ideas and helpful things that might work with this man. You know, at this point, I don't, I haven't quite figured her out yet. I don't know if it's physical, mental ability, something that's traumatized her in her life. I don't know. She's got some try in her. She hasn't gotten completely ornery or out of control. But, uh, so we're just going to keep plugging away in it here. I did call the vet this morning. I'm going to have the vet come out tomorrow and check on her. Check her eyes and see what we get out of her. Somebody asked about the swirl patterns on her. She's got one pretty much dead center in her head just a little bit above the level of her eyes and I've read a little bit on swirl patterns I don't I don't claim to be an expert I don't even remember what that particular position would mean in the center I know it means she's pretty well centered in her thinking other than that I don't know I don't know if her eyes are got something wrong with them. I can't see anything wrong with her eyes. And when you're up close here, most of the time movements and different things don't bother her too much. But when you get away from her and try to push her buttons to make her move, that's when she seems to lose it. So it could be a vision problem where she is not seeing quite right on distance and she can't feel that security blanket as much when she's out there by herself at the end of a lead or she's interpreting something different that she can't feel the support unless you're up here by her. Um, you know, and I don't know, it could be still, it could be the ropes that she has an issue with, you know, who knows. Um, one thing they did say, or one thing, somebody mentioned the fact that you need to get to her feet better and she's not moving her hindquarters around and, and breaking over as much as she should be. And I know that because that's what she does is she wants to constantly break away and back up rather than moving her feet around. So we're going to try a couple of things different with her today and work on her hindquarters a little bit more and see if I can't get her broke loose a little bit more. Cool. See, here we go on this right side again.
I didn't want that to go quite that fast and furious off the bat, but that's kind of what I'm talking about with her and how she takes everything so literally. On that right side, and just decides to automatically ratchet up that pressure. And see, even there, she's not crossing her legs over. But at least doing this, I can get her spun around there without her backing away from me. But she's not real good coming around. mentioned the fact last night too that she might feel claustrophobic in this round pan and to work outside the round pan a little bit which I might try a little bit of today but as you can see when she gets to getting away from herself I'm trying to get away from whatever's bothering her she'll drag you all over the place so putting her outside, out in the arena there, right off the bat, I didn't think was a real wise idea. Some of her reactionary problems are something that was taught to her. Because I know she has got herself upset and yanked out of Patty's hand a couple of times. And once those habits start working for them, Once those habits start working for them, they kill, they'll keep doing them until you figure out some way to convince them that they're not going to get away. And luckily, she's not strong enough to get away from me yet. She's tried a couple times, but so far, I've been lucky enough to be able to get her shut down eventually without getting myself hurt or having something major go wrong.
one thing about this mirror that's kind of odd is she gets real reactive in what she does if something's not going her way or you ratchet up the pressure a little bit which I did I pushed her buttons a little bit to try and get her to move her half end over and of course she went right back to that back and away crap and throwing a fit and carrying on but the minute you stop that pressure she's right back there you know she comes right back down again and it's like okay we'll start again but why she relax why she reacts the way she does sometimes is just amazing. And I'm gonna try doing this a bit differently now. I'm gonna just go over the top of the saddle horn and see if I can get her to bend her head around a little bit and come around. that time she wanted to react before I even got a chance to get it set, but I was able to get over there, maintain what I wanted, and be able to get her coming around. A little better that time. back to working in this round pen. On a, on a normal horse that's picking up the program and working okay. They don't spend a lot of time in this round pen. They get about three days in the round pen and then they'll get a day off and then I come back work another day or so and by that time they're usually ready to be rode I get one ride on them or two in the round pen and then we're gone into the arena and working and during that time off you know, they're turned out in the arena or they're turned out in the pasture or whatever. This has been a little odd for her because of how it's worked with her. And the fact that it's been crappy out and weather's been bad and all the horses have been inside and too muddy to put them outside, so I really had no place to go with her.
Something about this mare physically wise too. I don't know what breed she is, but my guess is that she's saddlebred. And if you look at her conformation, granted she's only a four year old and she might have some more growing to do and, and shaping up, but she's pretty narrow in the front end, she's pretty narrow in the back end, she doesn't have much of a hip to really be athletic and she's got some pretty long legs on her too. So she's not gonna come around like a quarter horse does or a horse that's a little bit more athletic in her build. She's been out here before. This is something that somebody suggested was to come out here and see how she acts. Maybe she's not going to be quite as reactive out here. But we're going to lose the camera a little bit here and there, but that's okay. Don't worry about trying to follow me until I get set up here in the middle. So anyway, we're coming out here. We're going to do a little groundwork or try to do a little groundwork with her out here and see if this might change her perspective on what to do. It was a nice day today for a change and I was able to get the mares out of here. So, it sees right now, she's like, you can just feel her wanting to lean in here, you know, you know, save me. I got to be up close to you to work. I ain't comfortable back there by myself. See? And then when you get out here, then she goes, well, now someone's going to attack me, including you. And she just doesn't know quite, oh, whoa, she just doesn't know quite what to make of herself, standing there by herself, and just relaxing. She's just waiting for the next foot to fall. Like her first instinct over here on this right eye is just to react to something. If I give any indication at all that I'm going to work on this right side, she's like, uh, I don't know. Starts that breathing and popping off. and. There's no quite what to make or whatever. All right, I'm gonna work, stay back out there. I'm gonna work to her bad side here first. <clears throat> and see if I can get her directing around her better. I worked some figure eights with her yesterday just to try and get her settled down a bit. And work a little harder to get her to slow down because she just wants to speed up and speed up and speed up all the time when she's going around in a circle. And somebody, somebody made a comment yesterday about, oh, I didn't praise when she does good. Well, yeah, I do, but I probably praise more than most people do. But I'm not going to just arbitrarily pat on her for one instance of doing good either. I got to see a little bit of pattern going on and a little bit of try going on before she's going to get rewarded. Unless she's starting to lose control and then I'm going to have to settle down and reassure and try and get things back on track. But praise and pressure, praise and pressure have to go hand in hand. Right there, she was upset about me patting my leg here, had to jump. She's like, so 
I'm just going to keep doing that. I don't care if she moves at the moment. I'm going to keep doing that to get her to figure out that I'm not beating on her and putting a welt on my leg. Go out. Somebody else mentioned that she might just have a ton of energy and have to just let her go around and mock one to work it out. Well, I'd rather do some other stuff to work out her energy rather than just letting her trot around on the lunge line in mindless circles like most folks do, just to wear them down so they can get on them and, and go for a ride. If she has that much energy and needs to work, then we'll do some figure eights, and we'll do some stopping and turning and backing up and doing all of the other things here to get her to move her feet in the direction that I want them to go. And I won't let her stop and slow down and think about it. I'll make her keep working around here and change directions and have to follow my lead until she decides to settle herself down and figure out that this is too much work to be messing around. What did you say? 27 minutes? All right. 
let's break it and we'll just pick it right back up again.